Hi, I'm Jonathan Burling, Senior Software Engineer at Qualcomm Research. I'm also the Software Development Lead for the new software architecture for the FTC Robot Control System. In the new software architecture, op modes are user-generated operational modes. Today, I'm going to do a code walkthrough of two different op modes for the FTC Robot Control System, powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon processors. The first op mode we are going to look at is a simple teleop. We are going to browse to com.qualcomm.ftcrobotcontroller.opmodes and open up teleop.java. An op mode has three parts, a start, a loop, and a stop method. Let's look at the start method first. The start method will be called when the user hits the start button on the driver station. In the start method, you want to initialize any hardware devices you will be using. On this robot, we have two DC motors and two servos. The system contains a hardware map, which assigns peripherals to references in the software. This line of code says, from the hardware map, give me the DC motor that I named motor 1 and store it in motor right. The next line says, from the hardware map, give me the DC motor that I've named motor 2 and store it in motor left. We repeat this for the servos and any other hardware we want to use in this op mode. Next, let's look at the loop method. The loop method will be called repeatedly while the op mode is running. In this op mode, we are going to take action depending on the state of the gamepad. Here, you can see we take the X and Y values from the left analog stick of gamepad 1 and store it as throttle and direction. Next, we are going to do a simple tank drive calculation to determine how much power should go to the left and right motors. Then, we set the motors to the values we calculated. It is important to return from this method as quickly as possible, as the new values are not sent to the hardware until we finish with this method. Once the hardware is finished updating, the loop method will be called again. This cycle will happen repeatedly as long as the op mode is active. The stop method will be called when the user presses the stop button on the driver station or right before the user switches to another op mode. The stop method for this op mode is blank, as there is no action we need to take when this op mode is exiting. The robot controller will automatically stop all DC motors and servos when the op mode finishes. Now, let's look at an autonomous op mode. Again, we are going to browse to com.qualcom.ftcrobotcontroller.opmodes and we're going to open up irseekerop.java. This op mode will have the robot continually follow around the IR beacon while someone holds the IR beacon in their hand and walks around. Let's look at the start method. This start method is very similar to the teleop start method. Except in this start method, we need to use an IR seeker. The loop method in this autonomous op mode is a bit different than teleop. The first thing we are going to do is check if the IR seeker can sense the IR beacon. If the IR seeker can sense the IR beacon, we are going to get the signal angle and strength. If the angle is less than zero, we need to move to the left. So we set the tank drive motors to move to the left. If the angle is greater than zero, we need to move to the right. So we set the tank drive motors to move to the right. If neither of these conditions are true, then we know that the IR beacon is straight ahead. We are going to look at the IR beacon signal strength. If it is low, then we know that the IR beacon is far away and we should approach it. Otherwise, we know the IR beacon is close and we will hold our current position. If no IR beacon signal was detected, then hold our current position until we detect an IR beacon. It is worth repeating that it is important to return from this method as quickly as possible, as the new values don't actually get sent to the hardware until we finish with this method. Once the hardware is finished updating, the loop method will be called again. This cycle will happen repeatedly as long as this op mode is active. Finally, let's look at the stop method. Like last time, there's no special action we need to take in this op mode. 
the robot controller will automatically stop any DC motors or servos when this op mode finishes. This concludes our code walkthrough of the new FTC robot control system. We're really excited to see what you build with the new platform. Visit ftcforums.usfirst.org to find the latest on the FTC robot control system. For more on Qualcomm Robotics, visit qualcomm.com slash robots. Qualcomm Developer Network offers you tools and resources to help you innovate for future technologies. Whatever you're building, whether it's high-performance apps, smart devices, or cool robots, visit us at developer.qualcomm.com.